Heroes, Mark Allen's Hometown Heroes, brought to you by Roxbury Truck Repair and by Phillips Iron and Metal. Joining us in studio today, our hometown hero is Leroy Stump. Leroy, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Good to have you in. I think I surprised Leroy because he thought we'd probably talk politics, but we are here to talk about you today, my friend. <laughs> okay. Let's Well, let's first off, for those, I think every, everybody, uh, most everybody knows the name Leroy Stumpf, uh, and especially if they've been around the area in, at any length. But let's go back and, and tell us a little bit about uh, where where was Leroy born and raised? Well, uh, good morning, everyone. It's nice to be here. And I'm, uh, I, when I come out to the studio, I always am marveled at the, the high technology that they have here and uh, because they're, they're always working on something. Um, well, myself, <clears throat> I, uh, my mom and dad always said that I was born at home. So I, uh, but they did give me a little a town, a small town back then, the town of Waverly, Minnesota. You may remember that uh, Hubert Humphrey had a home in Waverly. Actually, his home was on the lake, I guess. It was kind of a lake home. But uh, I was born, uh, we had a farm about six miles north of uh, Waverly. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it was a kind of a general all type of farm. We had a dairy herd. Uh, we raised pigs. We had chickens. And uh, just the other day, I was talking to our grandsons, telling them that um, when I was growing up, I had a brother. And, uh, and then uh, about, I think about 10 years later, uh, my parents uh, had two girls uh, about two years apart. So we had four in the family. And, uh, but our job back uh, on the farm when we were growing up was to uh, do a lot of chores. I mean, we used to have to separate the uh, milk so that we'd have cream and yeah. have skim milk. We used to also have to, um, um, back then, and people may laugh at this, but we used to uh, feed our pigs what they call slop. Yep, yep. And we'd mix in, the way you'd mix it up, maybe that's where I got the kind of the urge to uh, start becoming a winemaker <laughs> years and years later. But uh, we, um, it was, a, it was a, a great experience. I have a lot of fond memories of growing up on that farm. And then um, a little while later, well, one other thing that was fascinating to me is that Right after World War II, I believe, um, my parents took on two families. We had a large brick family or farmhouse, mm -hmm. and uh, it was big enough to have, you know, we lived on the first floor, and then uh, the, these fa families, one at a time, I think a year apart, they were from Latvia, the little country of Latvia right next mm -hmm. to Russia. And... Um, and it was some kind of a program where, um, where they would come to this country and then our family supported them. And then eventually they became citizens and got jobs and started to work and raise their families. And so that was, that was interesting to me because when they came, a lot, they, they were um, learning English and, and struggling a little bit you know, with different things and uh, learning how to farm uh, the American style and stuff like that. So it was, it was a good, a good uh, uh, experience, I think, for us as we grew up. Um, another one was that we had horses. Um, this was back um, when I was born. I was born in 1944, and my brother was born in 1940, so he's four years older. So we still had horses, and we still used them, mm -hmm. um, not so much for the field work, but for things like going out to the woods when we heat our we heated our house with wood. Right. So we'd saw saw up wood, and then have to go out there in the winter time with this. No chainsaws back then. That was by no, hand. <laughs> that was by hand. Yeah. <clears throat> the old long crosscut saw. And uh, we'd bring the wood in in the winter time with the horses and the sleigh and everything and. 
my brother and I would tie our sleds with a long rope to the back of the sleigh. And so that was that was another vision I have or experience that I, I still once in a while think of. Um, and then from there, we, and my dad was kind of, uh, had other jobs too. He was a school bus driver, and he also had a, li- uh, a truck that he would haul livestock to South St. Paul and, um, and then bring other things back to uh, people, uh, businesses in town. So from there, we moved to a town, uh, Buffalo, and uh, that's where I went to school. I went to St. Francis uh, Elementary School. And uh, after that, my dad got a job at working for a, a company called National Tea Company. And then later, I think it was National Foods Company. And he was driving truck and for them as well. And uh, so then we had, we lived for a period of time in... Uh, Hopkins, actually the boundary was Edina, but uh, it was kind of on the fringe of Edina. So, mm-hmm, but right. it was in it was in that uh, area, that suburban area. And um, I went to uh, uh, one year to Beneld High School, which is uh, down in St. Louis Park. And from there, I um, whatever inspired me at the time. Um, I decided to go into the seminary, the Catholic seminary, for um, uh, the St. Paul Diocese. And I spent uh, a number of years uh, both in what would be the high school part of the seminary and two years of college. And then I went over to the St. Paul Seminary, which was uh, right across the street uh, Summit Avenue from uh, St. Thomas College. So uh, my at that time, my my goal was to become a priest, mm-hmm. Catholic priest, which um, I had examples in our family. <clears throat> On my mother's side, there was a priest, um, uh, one of her cousins, which would have been one of my uncles, um, and uh, and then there were others too. Um, it, it was, I think, kind of common back then to have religious or have some of your relatives go into the, sure. to the uh, religious orders. Right. We're visiting this morning with Leroy Stumpf on our hometown heroes. And so you, you're initially going to get into the, into the priesthood. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, did you get uh, as, a, as a priest or did you move on from there? No, I... I Went through the whole seminary system, mm-hmm. which was um, <clears throat> four, uh, four years of college and then four years of theology. And then I was ordained a deacon. And um, before I was to be ordained a priest, I decided, well, I went down to work in Guatemala, uh, Central America, and spent a uh, period of time down there working in a mission for the Diocese of New Ulm. And uh, I enjoyed it. I really liked it. Uh, Father Greg Schaefer, who's now passed away, and Father John Goggin were two priests from the the New Ulm Diocese. And we had this missionary kind of um, uh, community where what we would do, my my role down there was basically to um, help with several projects. We had um, uh, projects like... uh, um, the, the Guatemalan government turned back some land to the individual, uh, land, uh, what they call um, citizens, native citizens of the country. And uh, for the community I was working in was called um, Pampopila, which is a little community, probably 250 people. They would get a little chunk of land, and then we would take that land and, and uh, build a small house on it. Uh, we would also show them how to grow different types of vegetables because their diet basically was one of black beans and and uh, tortillas, and we tried to encourage them to have more variety. And uh, so we had uh, milking uh, dairy goats. We had um, higher bred uh, pigs, so they would grow faster than the old. Mm-hmm. 
right. kind of uh, razorbacks that they had. And, um, and then we delivered some health care. We had dentists and doctors that came into the community on a volunteer basis. And uh, long story um, uh, about I was a, a dental assistant down there. And um, I don't know, I wish I had more time, but the, um, basically the dentist, basically all he did was pull teeth. They didn't have time really to fix or repair teeth. So my job was to hand him the tools, and um, and then uh, in some cases um, just assist the dentist. And there was this one gentleman who came in, and he was, oh, he had his hand up by his mouth, and he was saying, oh, duele mucho, duele mucho. You know, it means hurts, it hurts, it hurts a lot. And uh, so he had the dentist had a rotation where he would inject, uh, you know, anesthesia and, uh, or penicillin, or not penicillin, but uh, Novocaine, and then he'd have him go out, and there was about five people in this rotation. And each, um, uh, he, he gave him the uh, Novocaine and went out, and then when his turn came again, he got in the chair, and, and uh, the dentist said, you know, hand me, you know, such and such, a, not a player's, but I, I forgot the technical term for it. But basically a pliers to pull it out. <laughs> I have to get that tooth out. <laughs> and so, and when he started to open his mouth and he, he was going to reach in for that tooth, the guy said, oh, dwelly mucho, dwelly, dwelly, oh. And um, so the dentist said, oh, well, hand me some more Novocaine. So he gave him a shot. So he did that three times. And finally, the third time, he came back into the chair, and the dentist leaned over, and he whispered to me. He said, when he uh, opens his mouth, he said, you grab his arms and hold them back. <laughs> and so that's what I was doing. But um, he turned out, he, he uh, got, got the tooth out, and he felt a whole lot better. Uh, <laughs> All right, so, uh, Leroy. I, unfortunately, we don't have. Uh, I, I, gosh, I, I can I, I can tell with the stories you're telling, we would never get to Thief River Falls if we kept on the stories. <laughs> so I got to get you from from there up to Thief River Falls area. Of course, you lived down in the in the Plum area and got into politics. So let's make a quick jump. What got you into politics and up in this area? Well, um, I have to blame that on my wife. Uh, her grandma, yeah. <laughs> her, uh, her grandma. Uh, and grandpa. Uh, her grandpa was Art Rambeck, and he was the sheriff up here in Pennington County. And uh, her grandma was Julia, and Julia invited me to a, uh, a DFL uh, county meeting. And so I went to uh, this uh, uh, political meeting, and uh, over a period of time, um, they kind of, at that time, John Corbett had re, was talking about retiring from the House, 1B. And so um, then uh, um, there was a few other people who kind of got involved and started encouraging me, you know, oh, you should run. You know, you, you'd do a good job. <clears throat> Actually, at the time, I was working also for the extension uh, uh, service, and um, had good examples like Deb, Deb Zach and, and Wayne Odegaard and Terry Cornier. Those are really good, good people to follow uh, their, their example. And uh, so anyway, I, uh, the, kind of that seed they planted was there. And uh, even though we had farm and I think we had 130 head of cows, and uh, I, I just had no vision of how in the world could you do all that, you know, be away and, and try. And we, of course, the answer was you can't. You know, uh, we, uh, I ended up running for the house, and uh, um, there were many, many little road bumps along the way that, uh, that happened. Um, uh, and so I got elected. Um, well, I got endorsed after 16 ballots. So it took quite a while. A person up here that uh, Jim Kramer was running at the time, and I blame the uh, reason I got elected, um, not so much on me, but, but uh, the fact that I had very little exposure, but having that competition all the way through the, the summer, 
because Jim Cramer was campaigning his heart out, and of course mm, that right. put the pressure on me, and so I was doing the same thing, and and eventually I was endorsed, and then um, was elected by I think it was like, um, oh, it was like less than 500 votes, I think. Uh -huh. And um, Clyde Christensen was the uh, Republican candidate at that time and a strong candidate. Right. So that started it all out. And, um, and um, my experience in the House was only two years, barely enough time to kind of know what I'm doing, uh, where to go, and so on. And then uh, Marv Hansen, um, who was a state senator from Halleck, decided that uh, he was going to retire. And so he retired, and then he encouraged me to run for the Senate. And I said, holy smokes, I, you know, I just got elected two years ago, and then all this whole territory would be an awful lot to uh, territory to represent. So um, eventually the decision came down that I, I did run for the Senate, and win, and uh, that's and what where we're what at. year was that? Um, the I was elected uh, in 1980 to the House, in 1983, uh, 1982 to the Senate. Okay, and you're with at the Senate from '82 until 2016. You, you retired in 2016, never to be beaten. No, no, it was. That's uh, quite a streak, there, Leroy. That was a good run. You know, <laughs> it was I, a very I good I run. I should have gone out to Las Vegas. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> lucky, huh? That was, now, and, and I got to tell you, okay, well, we got to take a quick break here, and, and we're going we're to come back, and, and I know we're running a little long today, but uh, Leroy's a politician. It's always going to go long. We're going we're to come back and finish it up with Leroy in just a moment. Roxbury Truck Repair, truck shop, truck and trailer, maintenance and repair. You can stop by Roxbury Truck Repair of Thief Over Falls. Phillips Iron and Metal, accepting all ferrous and non-ferrous metals, including but not limited to stainless steel, copper, brass, aluminum, lead, insulated wire, nickel, high temp alloys, precious metals, etc. Whether you bring the material to us or we bring us to you, we provide quality service at competitive pricing. All right. Um, our guest today, Leroy, Leroy Stumpf, um, a former uh, senator here in, uh, in from the, the plumber area of the uh, northwest Minnesota. And, uh, and, and Leroy, you, you were uh, elected year after year after year because you, I, in my opinion, you were a people person. You listened to the people. You tried to represent the people. Um, I don't think it is as much as today where there's Democrats and Republicans and there's a, almost a wall in between. And, and, and when you were part of the Senate, there was more talking, it seems like. There was more uh, bipartisanship, and, and it doesn't seem to be as much now. And I think that's one of the reasons you were, were elected so much, because you were a people person. What do you, what do you think? Well, I, I think the... That's um, a, I know it's a dangerous uh, question to ask a politician, what do you think? But. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it, you're, you were absolutely right. Um, the, uh, uh, when I went into the legislature, I was very nonpartisan. Uh, now it seems like uh, someone who gets elected has to kind of go one way or the other. And, and that's what I see, a, a value that I see in our congressman, Colin Peterson, um, he, there's very few people that really work with both sides. And, and I used to do that. I, I, I worked very closely with uh, the Republican legislators as well as my Democratic uh, uh, legislators, too. And that's where we need to somehow come back yeah. to because there, legislation um, that's important to the public really should have both Democrats and Republicans and maybe even some independents. There's not sure. many of them, but, yeah. but uh, they should all be involved instead of just having one side or the other. Now, you, uh, when, you also got to throw in something real quicker, too. You also were in the winemaking business. Now, you're no longer in that, are you? No, we uh, uh, closed our winery in the end of 2017. And how long did you have that going? Uh, 14 years. 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, had to be a fun and an enjoyable experience, huh? Oh, it was great. We really enjoyed it. The people that came out, uh, we had some concerts out there. We had um, a lot of weekend. We were open basically Saturday and Sunday, and uh, it was so fun to visit. And uh, the people came from all over. I remember a, 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 
a group of ladies that came all the way from um, Minot. No, yeah, I think it was Minot on motorcycles. <laughs> and we we heard this noise coming in our driveway because the winery was right close to the you know our yard. And uh, and here they were one after another after another on these motorcycles, and they were tripping from Minot down here, and then they were going to go down to Fargo, I think, and then back up to Minot. So, but there was a lot of good good times. I think people enjoyed it, and I know we Carol and I sure did too. Well, real quickly, what what's keeping you busy nowadays? And uh, before that, how about a little bit about your family? Uh, tell us about uh, your family. Sure. We have, uh, well, Carol's my wife, and uh, we've been married, I think, this last, <laughs> yeah, this year, this past year. You better get it right. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be in trouble. But uh, 46 years, I think, we've been married. Congratulations. That's Thank awesome. Thank you. And uh, um, we have uh, three children, uh, two daughters and a son. Our oldest daughter, Jenny, is uh, works at the University of Minnesota at the Academic Health Center down there, and she's a busy gal right now with all that's going on, you know, in public health. Yeah. No and then uh, our son, Tom, um, he works for Microsoft, and um, he, uh, when he was going to school, he always liked to tinker with uh, kinds of you know, making little things and automating his toys and what have you. And so he got into computer science and went to Moorhead State. They all three went to Moorhead State. And then um, he got a job with working for um, um, it, the former version of uh, what what is now Microsoft Business Systems, uh, Great Plains uh, software, I believe. And uh, so... He actually got most of his college tuition paid for by, Smart by working, doing it, yeah. working his way through. It took him a year or so longer. And then our youngest daughter, Christina, um, is uh, um, she has three daughters. Tom has two sons, and Jenny has three boys. So if, well, we got eight grandchildren, and they're all good, doing well. Lots of hockey players in there, and uh, <laughs> and so uh, uh, and the, the, what happens? So f- what's so funny is that the three daughters, we thought we weren't, weren't going to have any girls, and then Chris comes along, and and she has three girls, and they're all dirt bike racers. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and 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 finally, to wrap it up, Leroy uh, Leroy Stumpf, our guest today, what's keeping you busy nowadays? Well, I, I retired in 2016, and, and uh, shortly after that, uh, our congressman, Colin Peterson, came to me and said, you know, I'd like to uh, open an office up in Thief River Falls, and I'd like you to, to uh, work for me. And so uh, since that time, I've been working for Congressman Peterson. So if you see me at uh, farm meetings, any kind of meetings, I usually go to a lot of meetings. And uh, the good part is that the majority of them are kind of from uh, Highway 10 north to the Canadian border. And uh, so I, I get home most every night. You don't have to travel quite so far and stay away quite so long. Right. That's a lot better, isn't it? Oh, I sure enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, we're out of time. I appreciate it. I know we could have spent at least an hour here hearing stories. Heck, we'd still be down in, in southern Minnesota yet, I think, if we <laughs> keep going. But but thank you so much. And, and thank you for all of your work uh, with the legislature and in the Senate. We uh, we really do appreciate uh, the caring uh, behind your decisions and whatnot. So thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Leroy Stomp, our guest today on Mark Allen's Hometown Heroes, brought to you by Roxbury Truck Repair and by Phillips Iron and Metal. (laughs) 